Hey, the affordable i7 system's finally here. Stay tuned. All right, so we're looking at the PVD5LE, extremely affordable, uh, does support your socket 1156 Core i7s, the 860, also the Core i5 uh, 750, so basically your entire Linfield platform so far uh, to this date and time. P55 is a very nice chipset, and uh, it's kind of changed the architecture a little bit uh, for what Intel uses, you know, has the platform uh, control hub instead of the... Uh, you know, no QPI, everything's direct media interface into the CPU, including the PCI Express slot. So this is the, uh, I wouldn't say the lowest of the EVGA boards, but it is the most affordable and it's the, you know, it's the low end. Uh, it's basically giving you what you want, fast processor and a big graphics card, uh, but without all the extras. So uh, you are not getting SLI support, but you do support actually a dual slot card right here and then a physics card right here. So you could run uh, to GTX 295 and then dedicate 900 GT for physics. You could do something uh, along those lines. Now, let's talk a little bit about the board and what's on here. Let me go ahead and peel the sticker off here. Starting off from right here, uh, as usual, you know this is a socket 1156 motherboard, so it's going to be uh, supporting the 750s and the 860s. Uh, it does have four DIMMs right over here, so you can do up to 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR3, up to 2,000 megahertz on this motherboard. Of course, you could go a little higher uh, with overclocking. Uh, lots of great features, of course, like on all the EVGA boards and a majority of the high-end premium boards. You're going to get solid-state capacitors. Uh, you're going to get really nice board layout. The board looks very sharp. You, you got to give it to them. Uh, you know, they did a good job on the, on the heat, on the cooling over here. Looks great. Uh, there is no Northbridge cooler because there is no Northbridge on this chipset. So uh, that's not there. The bottom one EVGA is down here is black. So it looks very, very sharp. It does have uh, buttons down here. So it does have a few premium features uh, like onboard uh, power reset and clear CMOS buttons. Those are always nice to have. Um, it also has uh, voltage read points, which is a new feature that seems to be becoming very popular. Those are actually. Uh, over here, down here at the bottom, see those little dots? You basically put your uh, multimeter right up to that and it'll give you your V-Core, your V-DIM, your CPU, PLL, uh, basically the importance of your terminal voltage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so it's really good for overclocking. It gives you, lets you know exactly what you're doing. Um, also for overclocking, it's important to note uh, that right up here by the CPU socket, uh, you do have six plus uh, one phase power sitting up here nice and pretty. Uh, that's going to give you, it's actually a, a pulse width modulation too, so it's not just a straight up analog. It will let you uh, adjust the switching frequency up to 447 kilohertz, which is not very high, but that will help you give a little bit cleaner power. Also, while we're up here, uh, take a look at these holes. I don't know if you can see them. See the, uh, uh, you don't matter. Here you go, there you go. 1156. 775. You know what that means? It means you can use your old CPU cooler. You don't have to order a new bracket or a new CPU cooler altogether. Uh, you literally just use that hole to lock it in. And I think that's, that's a fantastic feature. I like that a lot. On the side part of the board over here, you're also going to see that you have six outer ports. Those are going to let you do RAID 0, 1, 0, plus 1, and 5 uh, with no problems. Again, there is no Southbridge chipset, so those are going uh, straight to the platform control hub of P55 and then from there directly to the CPU. Down here on the bottom of the board, you're going to see quite a few things. You're going to see your front panel connector. You're going to see three uh, USB 2.0 headers, which is about one more than usual. So that means you can get two, four, six USB 2.0 ports out of here. You're also going to see uh, two FireWire headers, which is not something that you're used to seeing either um, at all on a PC. Uh, but they are there, and you can use them. You also have this really neat LCD poster. Uh, it's going to give you basically postcodes if you have an error. But once it's done posting, it will turn into a CPU temperature monitor. And that is extremely useful because you just basically look through the window of your case and you're automatically looking at your temperature. So uh, very, very nice. Moving to the back panel, there actually is a good amount of stuff back here. Uh, starting off from over here, you got a PS2. Uh, you got two USB 2.0 ports. There's a bunch on this board. It's got a lot. We'll uh, go over them now. Clear CMOS button, SPDIF, optical SPDIF, coax, 2.0, USB 2.0, another two, another two, 100, 1000 Ethernet, and 8.1 channel. HD audio. Now, to round out the expandability of this board, we already talked about the two PCI Express uh, slots right here. Now, you don't want to run SLI through here. They're not running a full uh, X16 or even an X8. So you'd want to run a single card up here in the gray slot. This is a separate slot. And then down here, you're going to run a dedicated physics card or any other type of PCI Express uh, card that you want to run. But you also have, just so you know, in case you want to run a TV tuner uh, or an additional sound card, you do have a PCI Express X1 2.0 right here. Yeah, and you have two, uh, I'm sorry, make that three PCI slots, the standard PCI slots uh, right here. So those are great for just about anything, uh, you know, 
basically TV tuner cards, fiber cards, network cards, you name it, you can throw it on there. Uh, now, the last thing I can tell you about on here is a couple things uh, with overclocking in the BIOS. First of all, uh, very nice BIOS for overclocking. Very easy to work with. Uh, you also want to take note that you do have a couple features on here. You have the uh, dummy OC, uh, which is basically one button push gives you a basic overclock. It might not be super fantastic, but it's going to give you a basic overclock. Uh, so that's called dummy OC. You have V-drip control, uh, which pretty much when you set your processor to full load and it cranks up to 100% load, the voltage goes up accordingly with it. And V-drip makes it kind of drop down so that it doesn't go past where it's supposed to. Uh, but if it makes it drop down to like 1.3 volts when you're at 1.4 at 4 point something gigahertz on liquid cooling, you're going to crash because it's not. It's going to stop. It's going to droop. And you need that voltage to stay that high. Uh, frequency, so that'll kill that. And then finally, uh, you guys might already be familiar with it uh, from X58 or from seeing it on other boards. Uh, but the EVGA Elite Tuning Utility uh, lets you overclock from the BIOS, lets you change your frequency points. You can set up profiles uh, with sh shortcuts like on mine. I hit Alt F1, and that takes me to my highest overclock. Alt F2 is my next highest. Alt F3 is my third highest, and then Alt F4 is just standard frequencies. Uh, it's really, really cool. Works very well. It's not for your final overclock. It's not like you want to set your BIOS settings, you know, with that. It doesn't do that, but helps you figure out how high you can go and then you go ahead and transfer to the BIOS. Uh, when you're just dealing with base clock overclocking, it's great for just that. So works really well. Uh, lots of great features. The PV5 LE, very affordable. i7's uh, on the cheap. Sweet deal. If you have any questions on it, email me and I'll see you guys next time. For more information on the EVGA P55 LE motherboard, type in E145-2072 into the search engine of any of these major retailers. For Computer TV, I'm Albert. <laughs>